Well, the first thing that jumped out to me is the name Jason Reitman. I'm a fan of his. Um, the fact that he's directing the movie and had a hand in writing, it meant a lot to me. I really like his sensibility, and um, I'm a big fan of a lot of his movies. So that was sort of the first draw uh, on page one of, this, of the script uh, before I knew anything. Uh, but I'm, I'm also a really big fan of political films. Um, I, I follow politics closely. It's a subject I'm interested in. So to kind of examine a very specific consolidated piece of American political history um, was something that I was sort of very interested in. And in, in light of sort of the current political climate that we're in, it seems uh, kind of uh, surprisingly relevant all of a sudden to tell this story um, and to kind of see how, in a sense, Pandora's box was opened over, over the week or two that, that this movie tries to cover. I've never had more camaraderie with a group of actors on a project before, to be totally honest with you. Yeah, we hang out every night. We've been doing this for almost two months now, and inexplicably, we're not sick of each other yet. So that's, that's pretty nice. Amazing. He's like one of the most down-to-earth people I've ever met in my life. He's a self-deprecating goofball who doesn't take himself too seriously, and so I think that puts everyone sort of at ease. We're kind of very comfortable with him. Uh, we respect him. He is sort of the center of the show, um, but we don't really clam up or feel like, you know, we get really rigid or weird around him because he kind of, he has this sort of effortless charm and easygoingness and sort of, uh, He's very inviting with people, so I think that sort of really helps sort of set us at ease and, and uh, makes us feel comfortable and it deepens the camaraderie within us. For people that are basically under 40 or 45, I hope they uh, are introduced to a very important, um, pivotal uh, moment in American history. Uh, specifically American political history that, you know, nothing, I feel like there's before Gary Hart and after Gary Hart. You know, nothing in American politics has been the same since the election. The amount of scrutiny that a certain political candidate has now has to undergo, in some ways because of this scandal, um, is a real game changer. Um, so for, for a younger generation, I hope they're sort of introduced to this moment in American political history that was um, kind of lost and very, very um, important in how it shaped everything subsequently. And for people that are a little bit older, I hope they can kind of, you know, view this period as a moment where, you know, Pandora's box was opened in a sense, and they really kind of can revisit this period, not only as, you know, Donna Rice, monkey business, this sort of embarrassing, um, silly little chapter, but actually something that really cracked the ice and uh, really changed the landscape of American political theater forever, too. Um, you know, I feel like um, so many candidates, which may have great ideas, are now much more hesitant to run. Um, because they won't be mm, valued or judged based on their ideas alone anymore. Um, they'll, there's, the, all, their whole past will be combed through. And, um, and they're much more clenched now in front of the press. You know, I think the Gary Hart campaign was sort of the twilight of when candidates and the press could just unwind after a long day on the political trail and you know, throw back a few beers and everything is off the record and actually exchange ideas about politics and budgets and Russia and the Olympics or whatever. And really kind of grow and, and, and sort of um, have just more knowledge about various fields and opinions on different subjects. People were growing intellectually. And I think all that has come to an end as well, which is very unfortunate. So anyway, I hope people walk away kind of understanding that this is a really pivotal moment uh, where everything changed forever. I think that debate of should how far should the story go, does the public have a right to know this, is this something that should be covered, is this news? I think all that debate's still going on. I mean, I think uh, the uh, the big change, in certainly in America, I, I, it, it took a bit longer to happen in the UK, um, where I'm from, but certainly the, the, the shift was essentially when news coverage came under the purview of entertainment. 
you know, as soon as news programs were all about kind of when they when news programs were all about ratings, then everything changed. The storyline basically is is the discovery of this of this scandal and 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 not so much what happens in the scandal but really about how it was dealt with and what kind of problems it created for you know the, the, the movie's really in a sense about not so much about the scandal but how people reacted to it and what how and what and the position it put people in you know um, there's a wonderful scene for instance when uh, uh, Hugh Jackman as 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 Gary Hart is is actually talking to a journalist about what is what is acceptable and what isn't you know what is what is up for grabs and what isn't you know what what is private and what isn't and that really is kind of the heart of it it was fantastic i'd never i I'd, I'd, uh, I'd never worked with him before uh, we'd met once or twice i think uh, and uh, it was fantastic you know he 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 comes with great energy he's he's um he's very you know alive and attuned to the material so he was always he he, he always worked was he was always able to answer any questions that you had about it you know he he knew the material in and out inside and out and 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 i think his his respect for his respect for the Hart family, I think, is clear. I think his respect for the people involved in the story is is very, very clear. Um, and his 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 approach to, to to the story, I think, was very. It was very generous. It's a very accurate recreation of of the Washington Post um, newsroom. And I think just all that activity going on kind of creates a, a sense of busyness and a sense of, uh, you know, there's something exciting happening, you know. And so he, I, and I think that was beautifully designed, all of that. And the sound, the sound design for those, for those scenes, you've got this hubbub constantly going on underneath. So that, the, you know, so even though you might be having a very intimate moment between two or three characters, there's this whole world going on beyond it, you know, which is kind of, it's, it's just really good storytelling. I think it's just a great story. It's part of our history. It's part of our social history. It's, it's a, it was a turning point in, uh, in the world in terms of how we perceive things, how we perceive each other and so on. I think it's, and, and it's, a, it's, a, it's a good story. This movie is sort of about the moment where journalism and tabloid journalism sort of blended together and became one, and uh, the idea that like the American people would be interested in the personal life and or faults of a president, not just his policies. Um, it really does sort of get down and precise, and like there is a moment where that happens, and that's sort of what this story is about, and I, I love that. When I found out that Hugh Jackman was playing Gary Hart, I was um, just uh, awestruck and beside myself with excitement because I'm such a huge fan of him, um, as I'm sure everyone who you've interviewed today has admitted to being. Um, it's kind of hard not to be He's such a tremendous talent and just like all around um, great guy, which is the other thing too, is that you never, you, you know, I've been lucky enough to work with some of my heroes over the years and you, you do sometimes, maybe a lot of the time, end up disappointed when you meet them. They, you hold them in such a high regard and then you just meet them and they're just humans and they have issues like the rest of us. Hugh doesn't, that doesn't apply to Hugh. He's, he's like an alien that um, can do anything better than every one of us and uh, does so while somehow maintaining like this humble attitude and he loves and respects all of us and like 
holds us dear. It, like he makes us feel like we're his best friends or like we really matter to him. And maybe we do, but even if we don't, God, he's so good at making us believe that we do. Jason Reitman uh, has sort of ruined any director after this film for me. Like the, um, the bar has been set so high because um, he is so on your team and there for you, there to protect you. You feel that at all times, it's palpable. Um, and he's also, he can be a pretty quiet director um, which I think a lot of actors, just by breed, sort of need validation, uh, and I certainly fall victim to that sometimes. And when I got here, it took it took took about a week to figure out that if he's silent, that means you nailed it. Um, <laughs> that because uh, he's not going to settle for anything less than exactly what he set out to get or better. Um, and so you know he'll adjust you. Even then, though, the the way in which he comes in to adjust you is pretty gentle um, and precise, um, and always elevates your performance. I don't, I'm not the type to mince words, but I mean that. He, um, he's made me better every time he's stepped into the, to the ring to, to adjust me. Um, me and or the narrative itself. Um, you can tell that he already knows the movie he's trying to make, already has those puzzle pieces laid out and that, you know, we're coloring it in for him and then he's putting it all together in his head as he goes. Um, it's really beautiful kind of watching that happen and being a part of it. And then it, it also like just further enables you to fully trust him and any adjustment that he gives you. Um, not that the adjustments he gives are like off the wall or anything, they all make sense, but I trust him more than I've ever trusted a director. I hope that they get up and go, that was a, that was a hell of a movie, because it is. Um, and it's different from a lot of movies that I think that are coming out right now. I think that that's important too. And again, I think that that's brave of Jason. Um, but I, I guess I hope that they, you know, specifically to the subject matter involved, I hope that they maybe re-examine the way that we look at politics or politicians or how we, how we base our vote or our judgment or, or all of those things. Because at the end of the day, this, I'm not saying that this story leans one way or the other on whether or not he was guilty or should have been president or anything like that. But what is interesting is that, God, he was a hell of a candidate. The first thing that attracted me to this was Jason Reitman. I love Jason's films. They all feel like they're relevant in some way to what is going on in society now. This is different for him. It's based on a true story and a real character. He had never done that before. I'd never done that before, not someone who's alive. Uh, but certainly working with him, all of his films end up being funny and fun and very interesting and very human. Uh, he doesn't like giving black and whites. He likes uh, seeing the flaws in his characters. I think what I loved about this film is there is no hero and no villain. Um, you see a political campaign in 1987 that feels very real and it also feels very human. You see the chaos, you see the mistakes, uh, you see the flaws and ultimately I think what it does is rather than give you easy answers of should he or shouldn't he have been president, was the press going too far or not, it asks you questions as an audience about what is interesting and what is important. I was very nervous to play Gary. First of all, he was almost categorically believed to be the next president of the United States. So you're playing someone who could believably be the president of the United States. And my wife jokingly calls me Senator Jackman at times because I always ask waiters what their name is and things like that. But 
To believably play someone who probably would have been the next president is something. Uh, to play someone who's as enigmatic and difficult to nail down and elusive was the one word everybody kept mentioning about him. That was a huge challenge. But I'm friends with Gary now. I got to know Gary. I read about Gary. I watched tape of Gary. I spent time in Gary's house living with his family. I call him a friend. And I knew or I hoped that at some point he was going to sit down and watch the movie that portrayed the worst three weeks of his life. So it was a huge responsibility to me. And I wanted him to know uh, that I took it very, very seriously. Prior to this campaign, politicians and press were friends. I mean, they spent probably more time with each other than they did with their own families. I mean, you're on a campaign for 18 months. You travel around from place to place, a small town to small town. You do your, your ax throwing thing during the day. You do a policy speech, whatever it is. And then at the end of the night, everyone's staying at the same hotel and you go down to the bar in the hotel and you'll have a whiskey together and, and have a joke and a laugh, right? These are the people you spend months with. From this moment on, there is a separation and those friendships are not a given anymore. Um, there is a separation between the press and uh, politicians and uh, that was a huge change that happened with this. I often think how incredible it must have been for the next president of the United States to find himself in an alleyway at two o'clock in the morning with three journalists from the Miami Herald, no one knowing what the hell to do. Like, no one's ever been in this position before. Everything was just jammed in very closely. And for many years, most people, and even to this day, people say to me, oh yeah, didn't Gary Hart ask the press to follow him around? Didn't they say, follow me around? But I think one of the things we clear up in this movie was that actually was not the case. Um, you just had <sighs> under pressure, time constraints, you had this feeling that the press were onto a story that the public needed to know about and they were pushing very, very hard to make that story come out. So the... <sighs> you had all these situations that no one had ever dealt with before. And you call it a cat and mouse game, but in a way it was uncharted territory. When I would tell people that I was doing the Gary Hart story, they'd go, ah, monkey business, right? And um, what was the name, what was the name? Then didn't he say to follow it like so, Many people, I think, go into seeing this film. They might know something, may have heard of the name Donna Rice. They probably have an image in their head. Oh, she was the girl on the boat. Um, and nothing is said about her at all for the first part of the film. And then in the second half of the film, you get such a strong, powerful portrait of a young woman with great intelligence, great ambitions, and you see that her life has been ostensibly stolen from her. Um, and I think you have great empathy for the character. It's one thing I'm very proud of the movie, I think, in the way it handles all the female characters and the way it shines a light on the female stories. And um, it doesn't give you easy answers necessarily, but I think it really makes you think and even question your own assumptions at the beginning of the movie about who Donna Rice was. Donna was the first person that um, Jason showed the movie to out of all the people in the film and I think that speaks to his, uh, how important it was to him as a filmmaker in the way he handled that story. Jason loves flawed characters. Uh, teenage pregnant mother-to-be, uh, a lobbyist for the smoking industry, um, a guy who fires people for a living. In every film, he, he loves the humanness of life. He's a very curious guy. And in this film, instead of just focusing on my character, 
uh, Gary Hart, he really focuses on at least 12 stories. So you are viewing a political campaign, a turning point in history, and he sits back and allows you, as the viewer, to really focus on whoever you want to focus on. It's got an Altman-esque kind of quality. In times, it feels like a 70s movie. It feels very realistic. There's a lot of overlapping dialogue. He used to change things up all the time. When I did all my press conferences in the film, I had no idea who was going to ask me questions or where they would come from. Um, it was free-flowing and felt very realistic and always um, juggling its point of view so that you as the audience, filmically as well as philosophically, get to decide what is important and what you want to follow. Well, what drew me to the character was Jason Reitman, who drew me to the whole project, who draws me to almost all of his projects in one capacity or another. But then uh, uh, once I did a little research and started to uh, find out about Bill Dixon, and it was the second opportunity I've had in my life to play a character that, uh, that is a guy I can call on the phone and email back and forth with, um, I, uh, I found him, first of all, just to be a great guy. Um, He's uh, uh, about 20 years younger than I at the time of this, but since he was a behind-the-scenes character, you know, people don't really know what he looks like. And, and he's a very uh, um, accomplished guy and a, and a, and a swell guy and a, and a family guy and, and one of many people who unfortunately will never be mentioned in the national press without saying, you remember him, he was part of that debacle in 1987. I think one of the things this movie's about really is the end of an era, you know. This is, uh, um, you know, Gary Hart was one of the last candidates that was, you know, sitting down having drinks with the press, you know. The, I mean, these guys were, you know, this is, comes uh, out of the era of after Kennedy and LBJ and, and, and a lot of presidents and public figures who, you know, all their little peccadillos were just, you know, politely not dealt with in the press. And, and now that we're in the age of everybody knows everything about everybody, um, this, this takes place at a, at, a, at a time in history that, that really kind of was the end of that era and in a way the beginning of this where the, the, the press were just, you know, uh, sniffing around looking for, looking for something, looking for a story whether they could uh, verify it or not. The two things that I liked uh, the most about the script and that, and that uh, you know, I expected from Jason Reitman, you know, were that it's, uh, it's not something that's taking sides or telling the audience how to feel, how to think. Um, and it does, there's, there's a lot of humor in it. There's a lot of, uh, I mean, these are smart people, you know, the people that are running these campaigns and, and Gary Hart himself and, and Lee and, uh, you know, there's a, there's a lot of, uh, of really witty repartee going on. And, and then, uh, you know, we're also, uh, uh, the cast are, are really having the, the freedom to uh, improvise more than usual with Jason's films, which are usually a little more uh, tightly scripted. But because of all the different uh, conversations overlapping all the time, I think he's, uh, he's wanting to use a little bit more of, uh, of what all these... Uh, actors have to offer. Yeah, I mean, Jason's always been uh, uh, very collaborative as a director, and that's, you know, that's what you're hoping for as an actor, you know, whether it's something that's more tightly scripted or something that, as in this case, is a little more loose and, and open to uh, improvising. Um, and I don't want to overemphasize that. I mean, it's, it's brilliantly scripted and, and and really, at first reading, when you're when you're just getting to know all these characters, I had to immediately go back and read it again because there are all these characters that I don't know their names, and and oftentimes three different conversations going on simultaneously, like there are often in real life in a room with 
nine people in it, you know, all of whom are smart and want attention. I didn't know Hugh at all, hadn't met him, and, and didn't even really have like a, you know, close friend, you know, that I could say, hey, how, what's Jackman like, you know? Um, but, uh, you know, I had my own sort of naive impression just from seeing his work. I, th I knew he was a good actor, and he just seemed like, you know, the kind of guy that I would enjoy hanging out with on set. And that's, I mean, those expectations have been uh, met and exceeded, and he's, um, you know, one of those movie stars uh, who's a gigantic movie star, but but really, really, really just one of the guys and part of the team and uh, uh, almost as good a backgammon player as he thinks he is. Um, and just, uh, it's just a great guy to sit around and swap stories with. At its core, The Front Runner is about the three weeks in which Gary Hart went from the next president of the United States to dropping out of the race. But on a larger level, The Front Runner is a movie about our questions about what we think is relevant. We're all human beings. We're all going to make mistakes. And we have to ask ourselves, what flaws do we want in our leaders? What flaws are we willing to put up with? And in 1987, there was a moment where a very qualified candidate made some serious mistakes, and I don't think we had the time to make the right decisions. People didn't have the right information. People were acting quickly. You had journalists at various different newspapers trying to do the right thing, but not always knowing what the right thing was. And we were at a moment in which a current affair has just gone on the air. Satellite trucks are now pervasive. CNN is giving satellite phones to all their correspondents. You have a generation of journalists who have grown up watching uh, Woodward and Bernstein become celebrities, played by Robert Redford and Dustin Hoffman. And Gary Hart entered a moment that he could have never seen coming. The ground shifted not only under his feet, but all of our feet. And now with 30 years of perspective, it's interesting to look back and think about what road that put us on. Hugh Jackman has a reputation for being one of the hardest working actors in the business. I don't think I was prepared for how hard he actually works. He said something to me in prep at one point, he said, I never want to feel as though I could have done more. And that is the truest thing about Hugh Jackman. I, I, there was a day on set, there was this uh, two-inch notebook or three-inch notebook. And I said, what are that? And he goes, uh, uh, oh, it's all on Gary Hart. And I start f you know, flipping through. And it was this research. Someone had created a whole research notebook of the whole life of Gary Hart. And I said, that's insane. Are you going to read that whole thing? He said, that's book one of five. There was this much research. He had the entire life. Our wardrobe department, our production design department learned about Gary Hart through Hugh Jackman. He found photos, he found videos, he found stories we didn't know. He, Hugh Jackman memorized speeches that were not in the movie. We would have moments where I was like, oh, we needed to shoot something. I was like, oh, you know, it'd be great if we did something from this speech. And he goes, oh, yeah, I know that speech. And he could just roll right into it. I think Hugh Jackman and I found each other kind of at the perfect moment where we had the same things on our mind. We both heard this story and both immediately reacted to the interplay of how Gary Hart's story reflected on 2018. It gave us a seed into perhaps how we got here, a thread that you could pull on and almost travel 30 years. JK, whether he's being Juno's father or a maniac drum professor or the head of the heart campaign, he's always being thoughtful, always smart, always funny, can turn on a dime. 
He's an actor who always understands exactly what he's saying and comes from, J.K. Simmons comes from a lineage of workmanlike acting who feel like it is his job to make the scene work. And you kind of know that as an audience as you watch him. Uh, that he's a team player, he's helping all the actors around him. And one thing that I've really loved watching over the last dozen years is the admiration grow around J.K. Simmons, both as we walk down the street, but also on set. When I watch him command this group of younger actors who admire him the way that that campaign team really admired Dixon. I prefer movies that ask questions than give answers. And the front runner ends on a question. What do you want to look at? We don't go behind the door a lot in this movie. We generally show you rooms that were public, that had lots of people in them. But for the first time in the closing scene, we really go into a room with just two people, a private room, and we give the audience two things to look at. A very relevant and compelling speech that's happening on television by Gary Hart, where he talks about the future and a private moment between a husband and a wife who have just gone through the worst week a marriage could ever imagine. And they're trying to decide their future. And I'm asking you as the audience, what do you want to look at? Where do your eyes go? What do you pay attention to? A man in 1987 running for the presidency, the front runner, many points ahead of everybody, realized that he was being staked out at his home and went into his alleyway. And for a moment, the guy who was gonna be the President of the United States was standing alone in the middle of the night in his alleyway with a group of journalists who were asking him questions about his private life. It's just unimaginable today. What makes this thriller unique is that it's true. It's just interesting to think about, you know, how different the landscape was then. And uh, I love how the movie explores how um, the media itself is sort of having a, a, an internal struggle about what, what constitutes news and, and, and the beginnings of a news cycle that's starting to approach 24 hours. Uh, what is newsworthy, what's not newsworthy, and now looking back, when everything is sort of newsworthy because nothing is. It's, a, it's an odd time we're living in and it's interesting to look back at this moment and sort of connect the dots. They say don't meet your heroes because you'll be disappointed. In this case, it's don't meet your heroes because you will like them so much more that you will feel so bad about yourself and how little you resemble this. Hugh is, he's everything you could ever hope for a person to be. Uh, he's kind, he's unbelievably generous, he's unbelievably funny and warm. Uh, he gives freely of his time to everybody around him, uh, fans, coworkers, his family. I mean, he's just like, he's, he is what I think all of us look up to as the example of, of what it means to be a star. And, and uh, it's honestly inspiring. Yeah, he's the best. We have only like wonderful, fun, lovely people. I mean, our, our little campaign staff of Alex Karpovsky and Tommy Dewey and Molly Ephraim and Chris Coy and Mark O'Brien, uh, we've become like this weird family and we make each other laugh endlessly and we do appalling things that if the cameras were rolling, we would all be out of jobs for the rest of our lives. But we have so much fun with each other and um, 
I just, I've been so bowled over, impressed by each and every one of them in, in turn, you know, like Molly has these beautiful scenes with Sarah Paxton uh, that are so moving and so special. Jason's breadth of knowledge when it comes to not just film, but sort of everything, uh, it, it makes it so fun to come and work with him because he always has not one or three or seven ideas. He just has so many brilliant things running through his head at any given moment that there's just like this like font of, of wisdom coming forth. Uh, and and yeah, he just knows exactly what this is. And uh, to see the shots that he's creating and, and the moments he's building between cast members and, and characters, uh, it's exciting to come to work every day because you never know what it's going to be, but you know it's going to be sort of breathtakingly unique and special. And, and also, he's just a lovely human being um, uh, who is so kind and giving and... Uh, like also like just like kind of a cool low key dude. I'm a young reporter for the Washington Post, um, like the young uh, hotshot reporter, and I asked the question that eventually uh, helps completely derail derail. Um, K. Hart's presidency, played by Hugh Jackman. I asked him a couple of questions that lead to the point of uh, me asking him, like, do you feel adultery is immoral? And he says, well, I suppose I do. And I go, well, have you ever committed adultery? And he doesn't really answer the question, which is a huge misstep. And then. Everyone bounces on that, and you know, very soon afterwards, he withdraws from the presidential race. Earlier, early in the movie, he says, um, "You know, put a tail on me, follow me around." And you know, and I, my character doesn't take that seriously, but it's taken by uh, Tom Fiedler, played by Steve Zissou's, um, and the Miami Herald. Uh, they t take that as like a you know a reason. To you know, continue like to really, really like stalk this guy to the point where they're in his alleyway at his home. Hugh is truly like one of the nicest people I've ever worked with. He's great, truly like uh, like a, I mean, I almost feel corny saying this because I'm you know in my twenties. But he's a role model. He's like exactly how you would want somebody to behave who's leading a set. Um, he's never like he's just so full of energy, always like you know totally gregarious and like one of the most committed actors I've ever worked with. And he's amazing. So great at his job. So it's like a pleasure to work with him every day. The movie tells the true story of Gary Hart, who in 1987 was the clear, in a way, frontrunner for the Democratic nomination and for the presidency, was leading in all the polls, was a one of the most admired figures in America. And all of that, uh, his campaign unraveled uh, in the space of five days uh, over a sex scandal, uh, a scandal about him being seen with a woman who wasn't his wife. Uh, that was really the first of its kind in American politics, the first of the tabloid era um, that came to political coverage, um, and, and happened as a result of something that I think is even quite extraordinary today that people don't remember, which is a surveillance, a stakeout done by a newspaper, the Miami Herald, at the home of a presidential candidate. Uh, and, you know, Hart really disappeared from public life, and the story was largely forgotten, but the story, you know, what, what we what we depict in the film, the story that it tells, is the story of really this moment in American politics when the worlds of politics and entertainment collided, when the traditional political media and the entertainment media collided, and where we began down a path uh, in our media coverage and our campaigning that, that um, you know, leads us, I think, to, to the politics we have today.
you know, people had had always told Jay and I, you know, you know, people don't want to hear about politicians. They don't want to hear about older politicians. And you should write it about a younger reporter and you should fictionalize it and make it a fictional story. And we had tried to take a lot of that advice. We it was our, you know, we were new to, to doing this. Um, uh, but, you know, the longer, the deeper we got into it, especially after writing the book, you know, we had started to talk about, um, you know, telling a truer story. I had always wanted to tell a truer story. Uh, and then Jason came along and said, you guys have done great work, but you need to tell the real story. This is an important moment in American politics. We need to tell people the story. This can be fascinating. And here was this, you know, genius filmmaker saying, you know, you can do this. We can do this together. And that was... I can't tell you how gratifying that was. I mean, somebody who got it, who understood why it mattered, and wanted to tell it exactly the way that I told it in the book. And the three of us had a you know, remarkable collaboration. You just couldn't, couldn't be any better. Hugh is uh, kind of a remarkable guy. He's just, he's, um, He's incredibly bright. He's incredibly kind. Uh, even off screen, I thought at first I thought, well, this can't. It's got to be a put on. Nobody's that nice. I'd heard he was that nice, but he really is. You know, he brings us scratch off tickets and he pops down between scenes and talks to you all the time. And he's telling me telling me something. About, he's just read or asking about my kids. He's just. Uh, he's a very real person, and I and I don't think that's incidental to the film because, um, you know, while while Hart is a reserved character, and a uh, sort of cerebral character. Um, there is this kind of essential decency that Hugh conveys that I think makes the character uh, richer. It's why he's just such a great actor. He can he can just say things with his face that you know, other people can't. First and foremost, we wanted to tell an incredibly gripping story in a real way and a funny way and a creative way that will engross people uh, and 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 make them think and and make them empathize with with characters. So I think we you know we've all shared the idea that we don't we're not making a message movie. We want people to take away from it what they will. Um, and I think all of us could have a pretty good argument about what the message ought to be at the end of the day uh, because because it's a complicated story uh, with, with a lot of people doing the best they can under difficult circumstances. Um, I, you know, for me, the, the main message of the Gary Hart story has never been um, he was right, they were wrong, he should have been president, he was stupid, whatever. It's, it's never been a judgment on any, anybody's motivations or actions. I've always felt that the point is that actions have consequences. Uh, both for politicians and for the media. Uh, and this is something I've said, you know, to my colleagues, that uh, we need to understand that this isn't a game, that, that, that you may have good reasons, you may have bad reasons, but what we do ricochets from that moment to another moment, reverberates through the years and through the decades, changes the course of the country, changes the course of history. Everything we do has consequences, and we have to take responsibility for them. And I think this, um, you know, to the extent that there's a universal message in this film, uh, you know, which is primarily a great story and a, and a, and a funny story and a moving story, um, the idea is that um, we all have to take responsibility for, for our decisions. And that's something that Jason has encouraged in this is that there are always sort of conversations that are happening to kind of keep it really naturalistic. And then sometimes there have been scenes where we're not really scripted to say anything, but we'll come up with a little miniature scene or something. And he'd say, yeah, great, like, let's catch that. So there might be some sort of off the cuff created moments that make it into the final cut too. Jason is very collaborative. Um, it's It's been wonderful working with him, and I've never had an opportunity, for instance, I have a scene where I'm on a phone call, so I was really the only person in the room because the other person on the other end of the phone call is another scene. And to, to feel like you can completely put your trust in this person, in their eye, in their ability to f pull the best performance out of you is 
wonderful. That's all you want as an actor is just to feel like, oh, I can relax. This person knows what they're doing. You know, they're, they're my captain. It was good. We did this um, live read of The Princess Bride last night, and an older woman stopped me on the street, and she said, I'm sorry, can I just ask you, is Hugh Jackman as nice as he seems? And we were like, ma'am, he is so much nicer than you could even imagine. It blows our minds. Um, it's not hard to, to play you know, his staffer and have this kind of hero worship and want to put everything in your heart and soul behind this guy because that's just the sort of person that he is. I mean, I think like the entire campaign staff on day one was like, I would take a bullet for that man. He's just, he's like incredible. I don't know, that's a difficult question. Because, I mean, obviously there's, there's a certain element of reflecting upon where we are now. As I said, the political scandal of Gary Hart in 88 just pales in comparison with what we've seen in the past 30 years. It just makes you kind of think, answering questions about her, and it just kind of gives you pause. There's this other layer of fear that you're not only like letting, you know, someone down who might not like your answer, but her specifically. I don't want to like let her down or not be truthful. So that was that was scary. I think people were so taken with Gary Hart at the time because he, from what I have researched and even you know heard from my parents, is that he was sort of like this JFK figure in the sense that he was this enigmatic, young, um, forward-thinking guy who inspired hope, and uh, and people really thought that he could make a change and like take the country in a different direction. And um, so I think that people were, were excited about him as a, as a candidate. He's such a great guy. He's so kind, genuinely kind and professional and respectful and um, yeah, I, I think I think he captured the charisma of Gary Hart. I also read with JK for the chemistry read, and I mean I'm just such a fan. So I was it's intimidating, you know, reading working with someone who you admire so much and he's an Academy Award winner, and I was just so thrilled and excited that I had the, you know the privilege to be doing a scene with with someone like that and he did not disappoint he is he is really wonderful in the movie i think that people are going to like this movie because you don't necessarily need to you know be really covering um following politics to like it um because it's a political story, but it's also a human story. And if you're interested at all in what's going on in America today, then I think it's a really fascinating glimpse into our past history and sort of how we got to now. I like how the script mixes tones. Um, there is a lot of comedy. Of course, it's dramatic uh, for the Hart family, and of course for Gary Hart, and it's it's dramatic for Donna Rice. Of course, what happens to her, and you know, uh, interestingly, we all we we oftentimes forget about 
uh, like Donna Rice or someone like Donna Rice in this situation. And this film, uh, this film asks some of those questions as well, which is great, you know. Um, uh, but then there's also a bit, there's, it's almost like a thriller, sort of like three quarters of the way through when, when me and, and uh, uh, I've been working with Bill Burr, the brilliant comedian, he's fantastic. Uh, me, Bill Burr, and uh, uh, Niasha Hatende, uh, we are basically stalking Gary Hart in Washington, D.C. And it feels very tense and like a thriller, but there's also comedic aspects to that because we don't know what the hell we're doing. So. <laughs> Uh, it certainly mixes tones, this script, and, I, and it does it really well. There's so many talented people in this cast. Uh, J.K. Simmons, of course, is, he is just a force, and, and Vera is so, uh, God, Vera is incredible. She, her emotional content when she acts is just, it's searing. It's just, uh, you know, she has so many fans and rightfully so. She's just so, she has such gr gravitas is the word. That's, um, I've only had one cup of coffee. It took me a while to find that. Uh, gravitas is the word uh, with Vera and she's just killing this part. It's so great. And then as far as some of the other supporting cast, um, uh, Chris Coy uh, is is brilliant. Uh, we've become friends over these past few days. He's such a talent. Uh, Mark O'Brien, Molly Ephraim, uh, you know Tommy Dewey, uh, uh, Josh Josh Prenner, so so funny from Silicon Valley. Um, there, uh, there's too many. Alex Karpovsky, of course, from Girls. There, there's just too many people, even even to mention. Uh, it's such a strong ensemble, yeah. He's the perfect model for a movie star, you know. He's, he's generous, he's kind, he's grounded, uh, he's easy to be around, and uh, he's just fantastic. I mean, you hear stories of certain uh, stars just being like terrible children, but he is a gentleman and uh, he's just brilliant to, to work with. I hope mostly they take away sort of the complex issue of what I talked about earlier, which is sort of the questions that will, will rise of you know, our leaders, the people we look up to, whether they be politicians or artists or movie moguls, um, you know, to what extent does their private life matter in terms of their professional life? You know, uh, how does character reflect what they do? Should they be separated? Um, I, I think it's going to raise all those kinds of questions, but most importantly, it's 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 about it's a human story and and there's a lot of humanity and pathos when you when i think when you when you're going to watch this movie because after all we're all human beings we're all flawed I play John Emerson, who is um, the deputy campaign chairman. So I'm sort of um, Bill Dixon, played by J.K. Simmons. I'm kind of his right hand man in this this whole thing. I um, I loved uh, it, it. Was really the the ensemble piece of this whole thing that attracted me to it. Of course, I love working with Jason. I work with him on a television show called Casual. Um, so I I I think he's the best thing going. Um, and filmmaking right now, and um, so that was the first piece. But the second piece was to make a really unique kind of movie where there's this scrum of people talking over each other, following Gary Hart around, and long, um, you know, long single take um, pieces, uh, long shots that carry you from one conversation to another. It just it's a kind of a, a you know I don't want to compare it to Robert Altman. It's a different kind of movie, but but it's a it's it's that specific. 
um, kind of filmmaking that's I think really cool and a, a different than anything I've done in the last couple of years. So. I love political stuff, but uh, but not if it uh, takes itself too seriously, not if it's too precious. And you talk to these guys that, that wrote it, Jay and Matt, um, that's that's the reality of the political world. You have to have that release valve of, 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 of humor. Um, and because it's it's a high stakes game and it's really stressful and nobody sleeps and everybody drinks too much, but um, there's a lot of humor in that world and people kind of giving each other crap. And I, I love the camaraderie among the five or six of us that are on in the on the campaign side of it. Um, so to to pop in and out of that as we're trying to get this guy across the finish line, I thought was was cool and it made him feel more real and. Um, I don't know, there's a, there's a singularity of tone in this script that I think is really hard to find. That makes it more moving. It makes, it makes you engage with it. It makes you decide where you land on Gary Hart. Uh, you know, like I, um, I think he, he's not a saint, but he also was a hell of a politician and, a, and really a, a, ahead of the times in terms of how the world was changing and, and how the armed forces needed to adapt. Um, he was a really good candidate, and uh, unfortunately he, he had to bail, you know? And uh, whether uh, you think he should have or not is, is one nice question for an audience to take out of it. And um, whether you think he did right by his family and his campaign team and all that stuff, it's, it's good and messy and gray, you know? I love stuff like that. Q and Vera and JK, I mean, talk about a wish list for, for you know, actors you want to work with. Um, Fish stinks from the head, right? Hugh sets the tone every morning, and it's one of, of looseness, and he can goof around even on the most serious days. He's on set, hanging out with everybody. He's curious about the filmmaking process. So is Vera, so is JK. JK brings such a spectrum of experience uh, to the, t the table. Vera also such a pro. The chemistry between the two of them is, is, is something that I sit back and watch and learn from. He's re his reputation precedes him. He is a reputation for being the best guy ever. And then, and then he shows up and he surpasses that. He is, he is, he's, he's, the goof, he's a goofball of the highest order. He is pure lightness and charm, complete effervescence. He is humble. Uh, he is silly. He is open. He is an openness and um, and a curiosity about. It's just you know the biggest thing for us to establish about these with our characters is is a is a bond, <laughs> and uh, it, it it was easy with him. Lee Hart for Gary was the rock amidst the storm and, and has been um, for, for over 50 years to this day. And, you know, I, I suppose what attracted me to playing Lee, I think what I'm, I'm curious about is her unbending love. I think I'm always curious about how women define and execute love. You know, I'm also fascinated with how different women's thresholds for pain can be. I think what he does, and this is really interesting, I'm, we're able to see when we walk into the production studio, he has already premeditated the shots, he hires uh, placement actors before the shoot and actually has places them in the scene goes to real life location he places them in the scene and then photographs the images in advance so you can actually go and see, and see the, mus the 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 film and the pictures in order 
of how he already envisions. He's he's really precise, and you just have to trust it. And I, I'm I've just come back from a film where we were doing 50, 40, 50 camera t takes per camera setup. And so to, to, to come to it, it's a, he's a really swift way of working. He's so precise, in fact, in his shots and in his execution of how he wants to tell the story that we're just, you know, one. sometimes it's one, one or two takes and that's it. He's got it, let's move on. And um, you just gotta, you always trust him, he's got a keen eye. Jason wanted a lot of turbulence, and that he encouraged us in the form of um, improvisation, and um, and and although it might not have been in, on the written page, if we felt something, if we were inspired to to to, and you know that there's always, and which is really rare because always we're reprimanded. Usually on most films, we're reprimanded for speaking over each other or the sound department will come. I mean, this was, <laughs> this was like fire and brimstone, I'm sure, for the sound department because, you know, any given time he had like 50 mics that he had to DJ and and control, but we had that freedom. And the film asks a lot of, I think, a lot of interesting questions uh, about, you know, what is that, you know, is there a line, um, you know, how, <laughs> what is that line that report in, you know, that what line should the reporters cross in covering politicians' personal lives? Is, you know, should flawed human beings be able to serve our country and what what <laughs> what um, you know what level of flaw is acceptable um, you know it's um, ra the film raises a lot of uh, interesting questions <laughs>